I prepared a couple of clips that I thought Dana and I would comment uh, on this campaign. Uh, the empty chair was, was, as you recall, was not George Bush, but Barack Obama, I guess, uh, as one of the seminal moments of the campaign. But you know, I had three or four lessons I think these clips are going to illustrate. The first thing, and I think for the communicators, you know, our politics, the real question you have after this campaign is, are our politics going to be as combative as cable TV? You no know, offense, Dana, but cable TV. No, I agree. Cable TV is set up deliberately, side A, side B, you know, make you kind of see the two sides go at each other. And, and presidential campaigns typically have not been that. They've been a little of that, 30% of that, but they've been about a kind of a big vision, typically. Bridge to the 21st century, leadership for the 60s, you know, putting people first, compassion and conservatism, mm -hmm. right? They've been about big ideas. Hope and change. Right, this was not a campaign, I mean, I think both sides would recognize it was not a campaign about big ideas. It was a campaign about choices. And that made it a very difficult, different campaign, but it made it mirror the kind of communications combat we see on, on cable TV. Now it became exactly the kind of thing that you saw in the middle of presidential debates. Uh, second, and this one everyone in this room knows, no speech is off the record. <laughs> Even this one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember I had a CEO say to me, he said, he said, what was your biggest uh, known speech last year? He said, my speech to Norwegian high school students. Okay, so every speech, and, and this obviously played a big role in the campaign. Uh, third, nobody can be counted on. I think you'll see which clips go to that. Uh, and fourth, reporters just want to be part of the story. Hmm. They just don't want to sit there. <laughs> so true. those are my four top lessons. Uh, I think that the empty chair, we'll play a, a couple of minutes if they're too long. Most of you will have seen the clips because this is a country in which 67 million people will watch a presidential debate. And for that alone, I think the country gets a tremendous amount of credit. You know, next to the Super Bowl, we have the State of the Union. So here's maybe, you know, we kicked off the campaign. Uh, actually, at both conventions, probably the candidates were not the main event this year. Uh, the main events, I think certainly he was the main event. You can play this one. I think it's maybe time, what do you think, for maybe a uh, businessman. How about that? Yeah. A stellar businessman. Quote, unquote, a stellar businessman. And I think it's that time. And I think if you just kind of stepped aside, and Mr. Romney uh, can kind of take over. Uh, you can still use the plane. They, they, though, though maybe a smaller one, not that big gas guzzler that you're driving around when you're going around to colleges and uh, talking about uh, student loans and stuff like that. Dana, mistake. Okay, so I'm at the bar with Greg Gutfeld, uh, who's one of my co-hosts, at, at the Marriott bar, like, like 30 minutes away from Tampa. He and I are watching this. And I was like, what is that? So the next day, I get an email from my sister, Colorado suburban woman, 35-year-old, no children. This is the exact voter both campaigns are going after. And she says, that was hilarious. Then I walk home, get this guy who stops me on the street on 42nd Street. And he said, I'm sorry to bother you. I just want to tell you that we love your show. And that Clint Eastwood thing was hilarious. I don't even like. Mitt Romney, but I thought that was hilarious. And I started to think, maybe, maybe I was wrong. Um, now, for the 49.8% of people that voted for Mitt Romney, they loved that moment. Um, so I think that in the long run, yeah, smart, but I think you're exactly right. Two days too late. Because when you have a convention, one of the things you have to do, and you've got to know your audience, these are people that have pent up frustration, that will pay money to go on their vacation time to a political convention and dress up and they got all the stuff going on and they have come to party a little bit. So you need to give them a chance to breathe and a chance to yell and scream and love it. So that Clint Eastwood piece should not have been the opening into Mitt Romney. That should have been two nights before. Right. Agree. 